Now that we know how to change the layout in Blender, let's take a look at some of the user preferences to know what we can change within those settings. So to get to the user preferences, just go to your file menu and choose user preferences, or you can see the hotkey is control alt U. So let's choose user preferences. And then we have several different sections with which we can edit. Let's just start from left to right and go over to the interface section. Inside the interface, you'll find a few things, such as whether to display tool tips, you've got your axes or your small axes in the bottom left corner to size. We've got things like auto depth, zoomed mouse position, rotate around the selection, which most people will want. So I will go ahead and turn that on. Global pivot, you know, all these different things are smooth view. So when you change views, whether it smooths it or if it just cuts directly to the next view, our manipulator handle sizes, those kinds of settings, some more just interface tweaks, under the editing section, we then have things like if we duplicate an object with material, do we actually duplicate that object or do we link it to the object data, such as the mesh data or the actual object itself? When we add new objects, we want to align it to the world or the active view by default. So a lot of different settings here that you can change. Again, just that have to do with the general editing of objects. Next. Under the input, some of the most prominent ones, we have a few things such as presets. By default, Blender ships with its own presets or Maya presets, which these affect the interface navigation or the, the viewport navigation and all hotkeys. And so it attempts to emulate Maya in that sense. More of these presets should be coming in the near future, but currently Blender only ships with Blender or Maya, and you'll be able to create your own as you wish. Next, a couple of very important things here. If you're using a a Wacom tablet or any other tablet, you will want to go ahead and enable emulate three button mouse and probably continuous grab and also emulate numpad. What each ones of these do, so first of all, the emulate three button mouse allows you to move around the 3D view by substituting the alt plus left mouse button for your middle click. So if you're working on either a two button mouse, a one button mouse, or using a tablet by holding down alt, left click and drag, you can rotate the view, Alt shift, you can pan the view and by holding down alt and control and left click and dragging, you can zoom the view. So if you don't have a three button mouse, just be sure to add emulate three button mouse. The continuous grab allows you to grab an object and when you hit the bounds of the viewport, it will just switch over to the other side so that you can continuously move across and you're not rest restricted by screen space. Next, uh, we obviously got our drag threshold, our tweak threshold for things like the manipulators and such. And of course, the select with either left or right mouse button. And again, be aware that some things in here are basically we the left by default is our action mouse, the right is our selection mouse. And so inside the hotkeys here, which I'll show you in just a moment, uh, there are some things that depend on the action mouse. And so if you switch this to left, that mount that hotkey or mouse stroke may be switched to the other mouse button. So just something to be aware of. Next, we have our emulate numpad. If you're working on a laptop and you want to rotate around the 3D view using our directional keys, normally you would press numpad seven, for example, to go to top view. But if you don't have a number pad, by enabling emulate numpad, you can use the top row of number keys, which are normally reserved for switching layers to then switch between your different views. Next up, we've got whether our orbit style is turntable or trackball, zoom style, dolly, continue, scale, etc. So all these different settings. Then we can, this is where all of our hotkeys are, which I'm gonna go over these in the next video. So let's just skip over them for the time being. Moving on, we have add-ons. Add-ons are essentially just small plugins for Blender. Many of them ship with Blender, as you can see, here are all the different ones that we have available. And I'll be showing you a few of these specifically as we go along. You can also, if you have a custom one, you can install add-ons from the community or others that people have written by simply navigating to the correct Python file. All these add-ons are written in Python. Uh, and then you can simply click install. You can see all of our different categories here for different add-ons that are available. Moving on, we have our themes. So if you wanna change any color of something within Blender, all of these are customizable. You can see all the different themes within the graph editor or we go to the 3D view. So for example, we can see our active object right now is this one here. Currently it's this orange. If we are to switch this to a blue, you can see it's automatically just updated right in the background. No need to uh, confirm it first. And so almost anything inside Blender is customizable as far as the colors. And in some cases, the size of objects such as the vertex size, outline width, etc. 
You can see all the different sections. We also have a few presets for themes that are included, such as the, the hexagon theme or the Maya theme, or my personal favorite is the ZBrush theme. Gives you a nice dark professional look. Uh, moving on, we have the file settings. So these are things like if you have a default texture path for all your textures, uh, texture or sequence plugins, these are actually defunct now, uh, but they're still there as options. We have default render output, scripts, uh, temporary files, image editor, etc. Uh, things like how many versions should Blender save? When you save a Blender file in the .blend extension, it will pre it will save, or if you save over an existing file, it will save out a .blend1 or .blend2 or however many versions you have here as backup files. Also, how many recent files do you want to show? Things like how often should it autosave, etc. And lastly, under system, we have general things like the DPI of the interface text, whether for sound, whether it's using none, SDL, OpenAL, um, compute device for GPU rendering in the cycles render engine, uh, various other things such as the OpenGL lights, if you wish to adjust those, things like the different color picker types for whichever one you choose as default. And then in the case you're working with a generally a laptop that has an onboard graphics card rather than a dedicated ones, you have the window draw method. If you have difficulty with windows being very slow, as if you move them or something like that, uh, switching the window draw method here between these different settings can sometimes fix some issues that you may have inside Blender. So obviously there's very other many different other settings here that you can adjust, but I'm not gonna go over those in detail. Feel free to look around them, of course, as you get more and more comfortable. But I'll try to give you the most prominent ones. And one other setting, if you're on Windows, that you'll most likely want to enable, actually, that I forgot to mention, is underneath the interface is a prompt to quit. So if you accidentally quit Blender by using the hotkey, which is Control Q, uh, it will ask whether or not you wish to save, whereas by default, it does not actually. So many of you will probably want that.